Good evening and welcome to all of you this evening. It's good to have you all here. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come here tonight in order for us to uh, be able to celebrate um, Monday, Thursday together. You know, I was speaking at the last church and I said to them, one of the challenges we have sometimes is that sometimes when we only come on Palm Sunday and then we come on Easter, we just go from one celebration to another, it seems. And uh, yet the power and the beauty of this night um, takes place when we actually walk that path with Jesus. And part of that is actually going to a Monday, Thursday service and going to, like tomorrow night, to a Good Friday service where we have the opportunity to pause for a bit and to remember. Remember what it was that Jesus actually walked through and uh, what was happening to him that particular night. You know, it, it surprises me sometimes because every time I have a chance to look at the scriptures uh, and go back and rehearse myself of these stories, these are stories that sometimes we don't preach much about or talk much about. They're kind of the in-between stories. But it's amazing some of the things that I saw in scripture that reminded me of some things I'll talk about tonight. Um, who came to join Jesus that night as he was praying? Um, what was that commandment that Jesus offered up this night? You know, it's said that uh, when we have those final hours of our life, what we say is probably the most important thing, correct? <laughs> we want to make sure everybody knows the most important thing in those final hours. And Jesus had an opportunity to introduce something called the new commandment. Something he referred to, talked about, lived out, demonstrated with the disciples. But it was on this night as he gathered with the disciples that he had the opportunity to introduce a new commandment. We'll look at that tonight and remind ourselves of that same commandment. Some people say, well, I've, re I've heard that word. I've heard those words before. No problem. But we don't realize that when it was spoken, it was not on a sunny hillside, but was in the final hours of Jesus' life where he knew where God was taking him and what would be required of him and the opportunity for him to be able to gather this night and to share it in this service. I like this service. <laughs> I'm glad that you've come here tonight. Your presence is wonderful, not just for me and for others, but also for um, our young disciples who will be joining us tonight as part of that. I appreciate having them here. Someone said to me just a little bit earlier, there's just such an excitement when all those kids are here. And I said, that's right, they just don't know what the pastor's gonna do next <laughs> or what the kids will do next, right? But uh, it, it makes a memory maker for us and a memory maker for them in their lives. So thank you for coming and supporting them tonight and being here. We do invite you to come tomorrow night, seven o'clock, we'll be doing um, the, uh, the wonderful Good Friday service and we'll be sharing um, in those moments. And we'll be doing something called the Tenenbrow service, the extinguishment of candlelight uh, through the seven times when people um, left Jesus all alone that night some of those stories. Hopefully you all have a bulletin. You can join with me on those things. Uh, we do have songs that are listed tonight. You can either sing them from the hymnal or you can sing from the words that are printed here and we'll be able to, um, to put those together. Tonight is Monday Thursday. It's a day on which we remember Jesus and the final night with his disciples. The name Monday Thursday comes from the Latin word mandatum, which seems a mandate or a command. For this is the night that we refer to as the Thursday of the new command. And what is that commandment? It's printed in your bulletin. I invite you to join with me as we read together. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Jesus gives this command, 
familiar to us, new to the disciples that were there during that Lord's Supper. When he tells them that he wants us to follow his example in showing love and loving one another. For 2,000 years, the church has always remembered this day by gathering for Monday Thursday services. Throughout the world, people are gathering this Sunday and centering it on something that we celebrate the first Sunday of every month, that of the Lord's Supper, and the recalling of the words of Jesus so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Those were the words by John, the beloved disciple, the one that Jesus loved. In Leonardo da Vinci's portrait of the Last Supper, he's the one that is that's to the to the right side of the left side of Jesus. He's the one that bending over to Jesus with his hands on his heart. Leonardo da Vinci painted him because he saw that the, the one who loved Jesus and the one who Jesus loved in return, who knew all about love. And said those words, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them even as you love me. We have some unique hymns tonight that are some of the ones that perhaps uh, you may not have uh, done before. I'm going to sing very loud so you can follow along, but you're welcome to do that, listen to the words, try it out, and see what they're like. But uh, these words are especially important, the songs are important for the words that they say. Nothing else, just take vision of the words itself. We're going to try a song called Help Us Accept Each Other. <laughs> Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O oh Lord, your lessons as in our daily life. We struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people, for all, not just for some. To love them as we find them, or as they may become. Jesus spent his life teaching the meaning of love. Through words and deeds, Jesus showed us how to love God and then to love one another. He fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He invited the women and the children and the tax collectors and all the sinners to come to his table. He broke bread with the least and the lost and shared the cup of redemption with them all. Jesus crossed boundaries of all types and all kinds. And yet he brought a simple message. Love God, love yourself, and love one another. So what brings you here tonight? A love for God, a love for Jesus, a love for ourselves. We are God's own creation, children of God. And then to have a love for for one another. To remember, it's all about love calling us here tonight. Let's join together in singing another song. This one's a little harder. It was called, Your Love, O God, Has Called Us Here. We're going to do it to a familiar tune, though, of When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, but singing these words. <laughs> Thanks. 
Jesus gathered with his disciples, he gathered together in order to share a vision and a meal called the Passover meal. We've heard that word, Passover. Its meaning comes back to a time when the Israelites, the people of God, found themselves in captivity in Egypt. Hundreds of years they had been there, always hoping and waiting that they may be able to be released and return home. It was in the midst of those moments and times that finally they were, by Moses, finding release and finding their way to uh, the promised land, the land they had been promised to receive. And so God said to them, I want you to remember what I've done for you, because every time I do something for you, I want you to remember it and be thankful, because I have, I have been, if I have been faithful in the past and in the present, I will also be faithful with you in the future. That's very important. That's why we hold on to these things. That's why we celebrate again this night, to remind ourselves and to remember. It was not by accident that Jesus released the people from captivity and continues to release people even this night. At the end of every Passover meal, if you've ever celebrated it with Jewish friends, you'll hear them say, next year we will celebrate in Jerusalem. <laughs> There's always that word. Always has been that hope. Next year, we celebrate in Jerusalem. That one day we may be able to be there in that holy city, there in the temple, there in the area where God dwells, and we may be able to actually celebrate it in that place. So this night, as every night, Jesus celebrated the Passover meal to remind themselves how God had been with them in the past, is with them this night, and will be with them into the future. It's a service of remembrance. So the disciples shared in the Passover meal, they listened to the story of how God rescued his people. The story reminded them and reminds us that God is ready, even this night, to bring us through whatever we may, we may be in, into a life of his everlasting, unconditional love. That's why this service tonight is for anyone and for everyone. So let's gather around the table with Jesus as we come to the invitation to feast at his table so that we may love one another as Jesus has loved us. The words were this, come sinners, come all who are thirsty, come all who are weary, Come to those who are thirsty in spirit. Come to this night of love. For God will pour living water on those who are thirsty for acceptance. There's another beautiful song. We've sung the first two verses. We'll sing the last two verses here. Help us to accept each other. Verses three and four. Let's join you. <laughs> Let your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love, to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing on. Lord, for today's encounters with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for justice, and for bread. We need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Redeem us with your spirit, Lord, free us to make us one. Tonight, the table that you see in front of us reminds us of that portrait of the Last Supper that was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. It was around that table that the disciples gathered in that way as he reminds us of what it looks like. What better thing for we do tonight but to reenact just for a moment that same look of what it would be like. And what better if we invited uh, um, our kids to come and to be those persons and those individuals this night. So we might be reminded by them what truths were held that night. Let's join together as we prepare.
For on the night, Jesus and his disciples gathered in the upper room to remember and celebrate the loving acts of God. That night, God was with them, his disciples. Even God's Son was with them that night as they gathered around that table. God was with them through his Son in the flesh. This was a night of love demonstrated. As we prepare ourselves for this communion, I invite you to join with me as we sing together, let us break bread together. and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to God and gave it to his disciples. Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, and as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. Will you join together as we read this prayer? O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by Christ's blood, by your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with the ministry to all the world. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Can you imagine that night? The disciples were all gathered around the table, preparing to celebrate the Passover meal and remember how much God loved them and how Jesus had called and lived before them a new calling, a new commandment. Shared with us, I give you a new commandment, he said, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. It was on that night when Jesus gathered together with his disciples in the upper room that he introduced this concept of love again and again. It's what Paul writes when in 1 Corinthians 13, he says, love is not, is patient and kind, not jealous, jealous or boastful or envious or rude. Love does not insist upon its own way. Love does not bear all things, but love believes all things and hopes all things and love always endures. It was hard for the disciples to understand what he meant by unconditional love. It's hard for us to understand. That's because oftentimes we do not have anyone in our world or in our orbit that loves us unconditionally. 
We're human. Jesus understood that. That's why that night he introduced this to the disciples and said, if you practice this love, and even if you fail, don't worry, I'll forgive you, and we'll try it again. But when you practice this love, the world will see in you a love that no one else in the world may understand. That's what we're called for tonight. That you and I may be the opportunity to share in a communion that can bring us life and can institute a new sense of love. Where we have failed, you are all forgiven. When we have failed to exercise unconditional love, you are all forgiven again. And it's out of that unforgiveness in remembering this gift of bread and cup that we understand what ultimate love is. Jesus said, there's no greater love than one who lays down his life for his friends. That's what we're here to do tonight, is to remember that love. And then to take that love out into the world and to share it with others. In a few moments, I'm going to invite you to come up and to receive the bread and the cup. The night when Jesus took the bread, broke it, and offered it to his disciples, saying, this bread is my body, broken for you and many. You may not understand that, but Jesus said, you will see it. Understand that my body is broken for you out of love. And then likewise, when the supper had ended, Jesus took the cup, and having raised it to heaven, he blessed it, and he offered it to his disciples, saying, this cup is my blood poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of your sins. This cup will be liquid love given for you. Jesus said to the disciples, take a drink, but do this in remembrance of me. And when Jesus had finished, he then said these words, as often as you gather together, do this in remembrance and then go and share that love. Demonstrate that love. Be filled with the very presence and essence of Christ. These elements of bread and cup represent for us the body and blood of Jesus. When we take these elements, they begin to feed us in a way that we take on that nature of Christ. Remember the old adage, you are what you eat? Well, tonight, when we eat this bread and cup, which are signs and symbols of Christ's love and body for us, we allow Christ to come into our hearts and lives so that our hands may be the hands of Christ. Our ears may be that. Our feet may take us to those places. Our voices may be the voice of Christ and loving for others. That's the gift that we have with us now. So we're going to ask you, if you'd like, to come forward. And uh, you can take up the bread on this side. It's cut for you. And then you can take one of the cups and do that. And you can uh, then return to your seat. I think it'll be special tonight as you come up to receive this, kind of walking into a diorama of children that do that portrayal. It may be one of those moments that you may never forget either. Will you come and we receive?
you know, for some of you tonight, it might be the first opportunity for you to actually shake hands with Jesus. So. Listen, I want to, um, we're going to conclude for just a moment. And how I want to do that is because the emphasis placed on this tonight about, about loving. You know, God loved Jesus so very much that on this night, when in the middle of the night they were in the Garden of Gethsemane and praying, you remember that the disciples were with Jesus, and Jesus said, stay here and watch with me while I pray. And then after a while, he came back to them, and they were all asleep. And Jesus then took three that he loved and said, come with me closer. And then he prayed, and then he looked over, and they themselves were asleep. And rather than having anger, Jesus looked at the disciples and basically had the opportunity to remind them of how much he loved them and cared for them. And you know what, what God did that night? You may not remember this. What God did was to send an angel to comfort Jesus. The scripture says that he sweat great drops of blood. That's rather intense. But God sent an angel to be there with him. You all understand that as Christians. We're not promised everything perfect. But we are gifted sometimes with angels that come to us in one way or another to comfort us and to guide us through those moments and times. It's all about love. So what better song to end our service with tonight than the song called Jesus Loves Me. Now, a while back, I practiced with you all as kids about Jesus loving. Do you remember how it goes? Try this with me. Are you ready? It goes like this. Yes, like you're knocking at a door. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Like you're sowing something. We're going to try one verse and then we're going to sing the chorus and then we'll ask you all to join with us as we sing it together. Here we go. Let's try it together with the chorus part. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. You're doing good. Yes. Friends, um, thank you for coming tonight. Um, the presence of Christ go with all of you. Uh, come tomorrow night. We're going to be celebrating. The kids will be here with us. They have some things they're going to be doing as part of that. But whatever. If you're going somewhere else for Easter, congratulations. Enjoy. If you're here and need some place to come, join us for Easter. It will be a celebration that you will not forget. It will be a memory maker. So invite someone to come with you. It would be wonderful for them to be able to share the same experience. We'll be filling our we're filling our sanctuary with balloons. We'll go outside. We'll release those balloons. We'll be celebrating the kids coming out of the tomb. Da da da! Just like Jesus did for the celebration. So many things we're going to be doing. We hope that you'll do. Please, if you have a bell, bring a bell. We're going to ring bells on on the resurrection. Don't forget those. I have a few extra I'm going to bring for those of you that are good bell ringers, and we'll put those in effect. If you have wind chimes, bring your wind chimes, you know, whatever. Uh, we can't make a mistake. Anything we do will be wonderful. Friends, as you go from this place, may the Spirit and the presence of Christ go with each one of you. May God so love you and surround you and protect you. May God send angels to go with you tonight. And may this be a restful night for you. And may the sleep that you have, you awaken by knowing that you are loved by God unconditionally. Don't let anyone else say anything to you. That's the gift that you have. Go and share the love with one another. Pour on that love, we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all the people said, Amen. Amen. Friends, go be the loving church. Go be the loving church. Amen.